my dad said to me, and I'll never forget this, I was standing outside my dorm. My dad said to me, Natalie, get a trade. to Q4 planning. I think somebody took our room. Uh -oh. Okay, I kicked someone out and then they stole my room after all. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. What is this? I don't know. I think we should stop filming, like stop recording when we open these because I think we're going to keep getting them. I'm okay. going to come over your shoulder. All right. Please reuse me and my ice pack. You got it. We recycle here. Oh my gosh. What oh. is this? Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh. What in the world? This just looks like heaven in a box. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mini cupcakes of the month. Oh, it's from Allie Allison. So my sweet friend Allie Allison had some questions for me about tech life and startup life. She says, Natalie, thank you so much for your time last week, your advice, expertise, and most importantly, friendship are so appreciated. Love, Allie Allison. 25 different <laughs> ones too? What? Wait, what? <laughs> there's two? But wait, there's more. Oh my god. Oh my Good god. Good thing there's so many people in the office today to share them all with, right? AKA, it's work from home Thursday, but look who's not working from home. <laughs> Kent and Natalie, so who gets the cupcakes? Give me one more. Another oh, package. We have another package. Natalie, we need to stop putting these on the floor. I know, but this is, this is so exciting. Guys, this is new to me. This is really cool. I love this. Finding deep friendships in a shallow world known. So this is a book that she's recommending I check out. Oh, and there's a little card and more chocolate. I think this is, a, I think people know me way too well. <laughs> so I, as you guys know, I was a wedding photographer for eight years full time. So when I moved from Annapolis to San Francisco, I still had a couple dozen inquiries and I still do. I have tons of wedding photography inquiries pouring in because I built up SEO over eight years. So my posts show up for all the top venues in the, in the state. So because of that, what I've done is I turn that around and now I send all of those inquiries out to friends of mine and colleagues of mine who are photographers in that area. So Becky is one of those incredible, incredible photographers. So if you're getting married in the DC area, Napa's area, you've got to check her out. What are we doing, Ken? We are <clears throat> filming some special clips for a HoneyBook video. Well. Actually, this one's for Wedding Spot. Yeah. Um, but it's all like the same idea. It's like to help promote working here. Do you want to work here? I, I think I do want to work here. Oh, you want to work here? I heard I they have I six work here different too. types of coffee on tap at any given time. So this is my dream office, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they empower women. 60% executives here are women. It feels like you have some very specific knowledge behind wanting to work here. <laughs> it's like I work here. <laughs> We're filming in 4K today. Are we? Yeah, something new. Left, to your right. No, 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 back left. Yeah, no, no, just the tiniest bit. Wait. There, don't move ever. Instead of sharing about myself with, let's say, five fun tips for Friday introductions today, plot twist, I asked followers on at Natalie Frank to ask questions of me that I could answer and highlight them on the vlog. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Just a quick mid-vlog Q&A session right now. Hey Natalie, what has been your favorite thing about moving to San Francisco so far? Oh, favorite thing about San Francisco, I think, to be really honest, it's both one of my favorites and one of my least favorite things some days, but the weather. This sounds silly, but I love autumn. Autumn's always been a favorite season of mine on the East Coast and out here in San Francisco, it feels like autumn almost every day. What app do you use to do your calligraphy in? So I use an app called Procreate and it's on the iPad Pro. I know some really awesome iPad calligraphers and uh, Laura Hooper, who's an amazing uh, modern calligrapher, recommended it. So I started using it, doodling with it. And to be honest, at first it, for me, it was just a relaxing activity. And then I realized how much easier it was to almost take some of the crazy thoughts in my brain and throw them on, on the iPad. What are some helpful tips you can offer for someone looking to start a community? Ooh, looking to start a community. So here's the thing. Uh, whenever you want to start a community, you have to understand the purpose of the community because there are a couple key components, right, with any community. And this is from Seth Godin's book, Tribes. And the idea is basically to create a community, you need to connect people to an idea. So something greater than just the sum of its parts. 
for Rising Tide, that is community over competition, right? That is our purpose, that is our mission. So first, you need to have an idea. Then you need to be able to connect people to a leader. And I'm assuming in this case that you're the leader. So you need to be able to connect them to you so that they have a visionary, someone to look to, someone to guide them forward. And then the third component, which I believe is the most important, you need to connect them to one another. So that might mean using a social media platform like Instagram, that might mean having a forum or a Facebook group, whatever way you decide to connect your audience, in order for, re for it to really be a community, your members have to be able to communicate to one another and to you and to contribute to the greater idea. And that's ultimately the fundamentals of the community. As an entrepreneur, what's the biggest leap of faith you have ever taken and how did you convince yourself to do it? Ooh, okay, so I'd say there are two. The first was not to get a full-time job out of college. I had a lot of opportunity coming out of my school to work at any company that I wanted and I refused. I wanted to prove that I could build a business. And that was very scary, not just to me, but it was scary to my family, right? It was scary to a lot of people that looked to a nine to five job or a corporate job as security, as safety. And here I was saying, I wanna throw it all away and I want to chase this crazy thing that I think could work. Now, what's really fascinating is that I'm also of the generation that was going into college at the start of the Great Recession. It was 2008 and everything was falling apart, right, in our economy. So it, it's something that I've noticed across the board, this side hustle economy, this freelance economy. We emerged because there wasn't a safe job waiting for us at the end of our educational track. Many of us maybe started our entrepreneurial journey out of necessity, not because we dreamt of this glamorous lifestyle that I think often now is portrayed on Instagram, right? But because maybe we actually needed to make money to survive and for us it required getting a skill or a craft. My dad said to me, and I'll never forget this, I was standing outside my dorm. My dad said to me, Natalie, get a trade, learn a trade, grow this photography thing that you're doing because it's something that you can do with your hands and it's something that no one can take away from you. And so if you can take pictures, there's always going to be a way that you can strategically work that into a job or a career, or offer value to someone somewhere. And I think it's really valuable. You know, I, my great grandfather was a stonemason, right on the Magathy River. And you know, that has also been just something that I always go back to and think about, you know, being able to do something with your hands is, is something of value. So um, not just to be an entrepreneur, but to be a creative entrepreneur that brings um, a creative skill set to the table. So that's one of the biggest leaps of faith, not getting that job. Next biggest leap of faith, honestly, I would say is going full time with Rising Tide. I had a highly successful wedding photography business doing over six figures every year and I loved that full time work. I absolutely loved it. So I didn't take the leap into leading Rising Tide because that wasn't working or because I didn't love it, which made it very scary. Again, I had something comfortable, I was comfortable and, and I was facing this dilemma of whether to stay in what I knew was comfortable or to take a leap of faith and pursue something that lit my heart on fire, something I was passionate about, something I saw making an impact and that I felt like there was a real need for in the world. And so going full time with Rising Tide, moving out here to San Francisco, getting more involved in the tech scene, those have all been things that were very scary and huge risks. I think that the key here in all of it is knowing your passion and your purpose and where they collide. And if you can figure out how to take what, make, what you're passionate about, how to take what your purpose is and fuel that into something that can financially support you in some way, as an entrepreneur, that's magic, that's gold. It's not gonna work for everybody and it's not the right answer for everyone and I know that. But when you can find a way to make that your reality, it's very, very fulfilling. I hate this thing so much. Wait, I feel like this is a flashback to my no! last wedding ever. Ken, are you? Watch, ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Did I do it? Look, I know a lot about making videos. I have never, ever learned how to use this thing. Well, that's definitely not how. Nope, nope. Out of sight, out of mind, let's go. We gotta leave, we gotta leave. On Nikon's new release of the D850 and the fact it's Dude, 32 my men, God. no way. I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that that And then happened. their response like, was I'm, comical. Well, what was their response? Oh, <gasps> just go to my Twitter. I, I never. Yo, you I, put them on blast, now. Okay, Natalie. because I've been, a, you know how no, many I mean, tens of like, thousands I, of dollars I've invested in Nikon? Like, think about this. I've shot Nikon for eight years. Oh. I own two bodies that are five grand a piece. And this is like, 
after eight years, so I've upgraded, upgraded, upgraded all the lenses that I have, all the flashes that I have, all the battery. I mean, I have spent so much money on yeah. Nikon. And for a photographer, that's like your, it's like part of your identity yes. almost, like who you yes. are, like people know that like you don't use a Canon. Or absolutely, like, yeah. absolutely. And it's just, it doesn't matter to me that it was one campaign. It doesn't matter to me that it was in one segment of the world. Like. Yeah. It, across the board, if you have a list of ambassadors to a camera, I don't care if it's like part of one segment or not. Being intentional about inclusivity uh, oh and not God. just a gender, it's not just a gender issue. Like this is a lar this is a larger conversation. Yeah. I think, you know, it's infuriating, but in, in realm, the realm of Twitter, so I, I took obviously to my Facebook page just to talk about it in a really casual way. I saw that. But my Twitter feed exploded with it, and I, you know, I basically just retweeted um, Vince's article on F-stoppers, and then, you know, tagged him in it, tagged F-stoppers in it, and then as people started liking it and retweeting it, I would actually go check out who they were. Now, the fascinating thing is, I didn't realize this. A lot of reporters already followed me. It's hard to say because I don't know how much of like Honeybook members are on Twitter. So I'm saying that there are enough interacting people out there that I think if you start providing content for them and start like interacting with them and like making them feel known, like heard, felt, yeah. like it will actually have a good impact. I think respond as a as a business, I think the best thing you can do is respond to every single tweet you get. Responding. Now I think that that gets harder the more tweets you get and or the less tweets you get, it's hard to find value in that yeah. but making sure everyone like either like feels that like you're there for them okay. and in my opinion like I use TweetDeck for that and I use it for Natalie and I both yeah. so I have both of our like timelines there and then both of our notification windows right next to it here so you're responding to everything every single thing because okay. no matter what it's the same exact thing when Natalie was like Gary V favorited my tweet earlier today yeah it was a thing for her but are you actually responding or are you just like favoriting both I do okay. both because it's not obnoxious for me. Gary okay. probably gets like gotcha. 100 replies right. every tweet. Right, right, right. And so responding is not yeah. feasible. But just like favoriting those tweets does mean something to those people. It just like, it's just like, yeah, I heard you. I had one day in March 2016 when I posted an image in the Rising Tide Society group asking for some tips on how to photograph these signs as I was starting to list them in my Etsy shop. And that one post is the start of a snowball that I never expected to be built. That single post kicked my business on fast and beautiful growth that has changed my life and my family's life. I watched one of your vlogs and you had mentioned anchors are an ongoing theme in your life. So I wanted to contribute to the collection that you have. Oh, wait! Oh, this is so pretty. Thank you so much. Stephanie Lynn of Lovely Retro Reno.